Okay, let's see. I'm going to um, do the second layer for the Hansa Yellow Light and Peacock Blue mix. I have clean water to make sure I'm not using the water that I used for all these yellows and oranges and reds because reds um, being the complement of green there, there'd be all sorts of comp complementary colors getting inadvertently mixed and dulling out the color the uh, what I was mixing so let me see um, that is not quite on camera is it ish so I'm, I'll start with just some straight Hansa yellow light and I'm, I'm doing the same thing that if you saw the previous mix for these guys I'm just wetting down that that well is um, plenty of mixed color from the previous painting session so I'm just wetting it down slightly and activating the the mixed layers the mixed color that's sort of floating on the top or it's kind of easy to get rid of it's sad but it's important so this is just some straight Hansa yellow and I am trying to mix it make sure I find a clean version of this that is not doesn't have any of the naphthol red and here is my second layer of Hansa yellow light the first layers I don't think I have a, a video of but that's very no nonsense just a really watery layer across all four swatch rectangles and I do it this way to build up intense color so that I have layers many layers it's like an ogre um, okay that was random but let's see here I am gonna now go to my peacock blue which is you let me see me try to get mix up a little even when I grab paint and it's I know I'm not going to use that much it's still important to to make sure that you're mixing it around so there's not unmixed chunks hiding in your brush want that a little bit more concentrated so if I call that first layer watery I suppose this one is kind of watery juicy somewhere between those soak that up and tinting strength um, similar to naphthol red the peacock is pretty powerful any thalo paints are quite strong in their um, tinting strength so um, it's not going to take a whole lot um, so let's see what do I feel like you are you're sort of I'm talking to my colors that seems I'm gonna call that kind of more um, right in the middle that feels pretty straight green to me <sighs> might be a little too watery but this it's a good example if it is too watery and I get to this point where I feel like I've laid down a nice even wash of 
of color that's evenly distributed in the shape that I want it to. I'd much rather just sort of let this dry and come back and try another layer than, um, than go back and, and fuss with it. It dep depends on what you're doing, but there'll definitely be plenty of times when I will err on the side of, I'll come back and do that again because the most important thing is the distribution of of water when I'm trying to get this even even effect. Flat, flat wash effect. So let's see, there's a little bit of lemon yellow and a little bit of that peacock blue is still in there. So that's making a um, between yellow and green, yellow green. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. Um, I am going to get rid of, s I can still come back even though I painted these other ones a while back. I could tell that's probably going to, I wasn't careful enough about sponging up, soaking up the excess water down here. So it's going to dry a little inconsistent and leave a little watermark, which is not the end of the world. Oh look, I added a little bit of peacock yellow in there. Peacock yellow, did I say that? <laughs> peacock blue is what I meant to say. So let me see, now I wanna do mostly peacock blue to get this sort of blue-green. You can see I sort of ch definitely change the angle of my brush when I'm trying to get more of the tip. And the more confident you get with it, the, the more you can sort of switch position how close you feel like you need to hold it to the tip versus holding it pretty far back. And each one of those will have sort of different feels to them. Further back is a little looser, but not quite as much control. So I feel like all of those, all of those second washes for that one were a little on the watery side, but um, oh well. When I am soaking this up, it is, you know, you can make it so you don't even really need to touch the paper, but you can make a, uh, a brush thirsty enough to just sort of touch water and start soaking it up. That was an example of doing that on that particular pile, but um, yeah, let's call that fine for now and more soon.